Hey guys, uh, I figured I should do a little walk around uh, the house, the garden area. So this is the front. Uh, all the ornamental stuff is really starting to, to grow. So my next project will be uh, clipping some of these guys back. Up here's the road. So now down along the road here we have this 200 year old walnut tree. And it was interesting uh, listening to Bacon Soda. Uh, talk about the problems he's having with roots on uh, the trees next to his garden. Well, I was going to do the same thing as he was. Uh, let me get through these bushes here and do a trench line because the roots from this walnut tree uh, over here just find their way over to the beds and they come up through uh, the fabric cloth that I have in the bottom of the uh, raised beds. So what I did is uh, I've taken down some branches, uh, the ones that have been coming over this way to reduce the drip line uh, towards the garden. And then my next uh, project will be to uh, put some drippers over here to keep the soil closer to the tree wet and they don't have to come over as far. So I'm gonna pan over to the back area. Okay, so then, uh, Here's our pump house, uh, butterfly area, garden over here, and then going down into the back area, uh, another flower garden down below, uh, our pasture, do some agility work with uh, our standard poodle, and then back up to the, the front of the house. So, in the back, we've got a barn and a shop area. And uh, I'll take you guys down there later. Well, a lot of us are adding, uh, you know, fresh uh, soil, compost. Uh, the problem with this, now this has got loam, but it's mostly comprised of uh, ground up uh, bark, leaves, limbs, uh, all that kind of stuff. What it lacks is all the things that come from glaciers and glacier activity. So I end up uh, in the raised beds for each 10 foot long raised bed. I add a third of a cubic yard of uh, fine uh, sand and it's uh, mined locally. I know the hillside it comes out of and it's pure. It hasn't been contaminated by man. So that has to be added to this because it doesn't have any uh, you know, granular stuff in it. Now next I add, that's just what I do, is feather meal for the nitrogen. It's a slow breakdown. Uh, rock phosphate uh, from glaciers. Green sand to add those trace minerals. And granular azomite. Uh, calcium, sodium, magnesium, uh, the uh, rock foss is mostly iron and calcium, so all good stuff. So along with that, I uh, go across the street and get some uh, year-old horse manure to add to the bins. So uh, I've got a good supply of, of that. And over the fence line in the back, uh, I come over and get some uh, fresh cow patties. Now the reason... Um, fresh cow patties is I only get it for the bacteria, the beneficial bacteria, and I just kind of inoculate uh, the beds. So it's not to add uh, nitrogen, but just the beneficial bacteria. So this spot is uh, gonna turn into uh, a milkweed restoration project for the monarch butterflies. And just getting it ready to, to transplant some starts. You know, I had said that this uh, little RV in the, under the cover of the barn was going to be a, a, ch a chicken or a rooster. I don't know what I said, but uh, it's actually going to be a, a movable chicken coop. And uh, there'll be some chickens up here, the layers, and then I'll have some others uh, down in the pasture. And that'll be where the, uh, the movable guy is going to go. 
So down and back here is just where I keep my uh, tractor elements, implements, um, and used to do some farming back here. Uh, it's a nice moist area, but uh, you know, it can only do so much. I mean, if I was like uh, in Bobby, I'd have a nice big old greenhouse down in here. Uh, perfect spot, perfect conditions, uh, right angle with the sun. I mean, it's just a, a perfect spot for somebody that's uh, a little younger to get moving. Well, unlike Gary at uh, Gary's Garden, uh, our potatoes got uh, nipped the other night. It wasn't uh, forecasted to be uh, frosty, but it uh, got down to 28, so um, they'll come back. But, you know, it just kind of delayed things. Well, I don't know if it really delayed them, but they certainly don't look as nice. It made it kind of easy on uh, putting them on the pallet because then I had them uh, in this corral area. But as the leaves came out on the trees and they're getting taller, uh, the sun in the afternoon wasn't as much. So, you know, I just put the fork on my the bucket of my tractor, pick it up and kind of move it around. So uh, I was glad I, I did that. It was going to be initially just so the bags had good drainage, but it turned out to be a twofold thing. So here we go. So our little footbridge that's here now had been up over here, but we had a lot of flooding this uh, past winter and uh, debris got under the bridge and caused the water to divert uh, to the bank on both sides and ended up washing out our little footbridge. So I have to do that. I'm thinking of putting in a French drain or I don't know, rocks and a 12 inch pipe uh, to carry the water down and through. But anyway, just another project. Yeah, a little sitting area I did a couple years ago, but I'm gonna have to uh, redo the chair and table. Um, just to add some new wood. Uh, sitting area I did uh, many years ago so that we uh, could come out in the evening and have a view down valley. So what I didn't realize from the sitting area um, is the number of ants that uh, grow and breed in here and uh, also the sap drippings uh, from the dug fir tree onto the chair. So, you know, we have to make sure that we they're always covered or, you know, we, we take the cushions in. I mean, it's a nice, uh, pretty spot, but, you know, there's uh, some management that has to be done to also enjoy it.